How are you going to approve the district as a board member? So basically, and this begins with Ralph, that's correct, right? Um, the question is, do you have specific ideas, <coughs> excuse me, about ways to improve the achievement of uh, the district, the graduation rate of the district, improve the district uh, in general, and if at the end of a minute you're not finished, simply you can say to be continued and pick it up in the final statements. Well, <clears throat> nothing is going to happen on this board unless three people on the board can get along with each other long enough to start implementing some serious policies. So uh, it, it's kind of silly for any of us individually to say, I would do this, I would do that, because no one can do something by themselves. And so I think part of the problem is that board members uh, should have the skills to be able to meaningfully negotiate with other board members to reach consensus and then have the will and the strength to stand up to the large administrative structure uh, and implement policy because that's what the board's there for and that's what the taxpayers want from us. And I believe that uh, my background as a criminal defense lawyer uh, gives me a long life of experience doing exactly that, standing up uh, for the individual uh, against the government and with having to negotiate very difficult compromises in a wide variety of cases. And I think the time has come for the board to quit uh, rolling over, to, to grow uh, some uh, backbone and stand up and work together as a team to improve what we all have been talking about, and, and the problems are endless. Uh, but it's not going to happen if we don't get a strong board. I, I'm using my closing. Oh, oh, oh. oh, you don't get to use it yet. You get to continue later. Right, you don't get to use it now. I misunderstood. Okay, Sorry. no problem. I, I agree with Ralph that one thing the district has not had it needs is a strong board that's willing to exercise leadership. But I go back to my original point that I think one of the things that's going to make the, strong, the board stronger is to stop talking about the board and actually to talk about what we think needs to happen in the schools and in policy. I think we need calendar reform. The way the school calendar is set up is 50 years old. It doesn't work well for families or for professional development or for student achievement. I've talked about that a lot in the past. I think we need to talk about how we recruit and compensate and evaluate principals who are the most administrators in the district and actually far more important than the board itself is. I think we need, and I, these are positions I've argued for several years, an internal auditor. I think that would more than pay for itself in financial accountability. I think we need further reform and procurement practices. I think we need to encourage students to make better use of Mojave because we lose a lot of money to online charter schools. And I'll stop there, but there's a lot more. Options are always important, uh, but I think we need to start with the discussion of early childhood development. PK is going to be crucial in preparing our students for the remaining K-12 career. I think we need to start there. I think we need to look at STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. I think it's important that we include art in there because art is going to, again, help with the creativity of these students, but also it's going to engage parents, it's going to engage community members, and it's going to create innovation in our students and our teachers as we, as we go forward. I think the last thing that we need to do is we need to invest in our teachers. I think we need to right off the bat start looking, sure, at recruiting principals, but I think we need to start recruiting teachers and we need to start compensating teachers appropriately. Lastly, what I would say is we need to look at our budget. We need to retask, reprioritize, and we need to make our budget accessible. And we need to bring our community into that. Whether that's an internal auditor or not, I think we need to look at our budget very closely. That way the board would know what exactly is that budget and why we're, we're looking at a shortfall or a cliff. 
So what I would bring to the board uh, and the way that and the way that I would improve it. That's okay. Don't start that timer. It'll be fine. Um, <laughs> I'm an independent, as you may have noticed, and one of the things that, um, that I don't care for about the board is all of the political work that goes on in the board. As a parent, I know that it makes me wild to think that somebody is building a political career out of decisions that have to do with my child's education. He has one shot at his education. They have a whole lifetime to build their political career. I think they should be doing it on the zoning board or on the garbage board, somewhere other than the education board. Um, there's no clapping allowed, but thanks anyway. Um, I think that the, what I would work to do in, in, along that line is that I would, I would want to be working with ideas. It doesn't matter to me where a good idea comes from. That's what brainstorming is about. And what I think that we need in this district more than anything is to take good ideas from others, to listen to parents and to listen to their ideas, and to actually think about implementing those ideas, but think outside of the box. And stop worrying about what party or what affiliation or what the future of this individual's career looks like and start worrying about our kids, our, par our parents, our district. Well, as a product of the Tucson Unified School District, there's a couple of things that I have um, implemented from my own personal experience and also visiting a majority of our schools. You know, it takes a majority of the board to pass some of the things. For example, strong leadership. We have a very strong superintendent who has made huge reforms in the school district. For, and the other thing is it takes a majority of the board to implement the common core curriculum, which is gonna raise the bar when it comes to curriculum. It takes a majority of the board to support the quality of instruction by our essential elements of instruction. It took a majority of the board to make sure that we replaced 7,000 computers. Computers that were there since I was in middle school in 97. We've done that as a board. We have worked consistently together. As a president of the board and as a policymaker, I build consensus to make sure now that the district has academic goals. That took a consensus and a majority of the board to do it, and it's happening, and we're on the right trajectory. We wouldn't have 12 people here if, we were, if it was all working, that's for sure. Um, definitely we need a board who's going to work together. That's first and foremost, to, to set a vision and bring values and commit to that. We have to reallocate our funds uh, to support our classrooms. I think we're very top heavy and we're definitely very um, imposed from above. We have to empower the local school sites to make the right choices for the kids in that community. And with a defined accountability, not just a free-for-all, there has to definitely be a defined accountability. But we have to empower, because we're not going to build capacity any other way. If it's a top-down model, this is what you say you have to do, how, are we, how will we professionalize our teachers? And we have to invest in those teachers. We invest, I'm glad that professional development is brought back. And it has to be differentiated, not just one size fits all. You know, how is that? How is the professional development helping to, to support the learners in that building? And so it's bringing that power back to, to the local site, holding them accountable for it, most definitely, and investing in, in the professionalization of our, of our teachers, um, because that's the only way to build capacity, most definitely, in our district. <laughs> Well, the board was actually doing that. actually doing their job, we wouldn't have such a high dropout rate, and we wouldn't have such a high deficit. My question is, we need to focus, again, on the needs of our students, which should come always first, and there are many programs that we can do to improve the education level, education level of our kids, and we can, you know, they have after school programs and they have before school programs, but not every parent has transportation because there aren't any buses available before school or after school. 
We need to have some programs available during school hours, especially for kids that have difficulty in reading and writing. Take these kids, there might be six or seven, eight kids, maybe in each school, take them out, spend an hour with them, and make sure that they understand how important it is in getting a quality education and get the parents involved. Parents need to get involved. I would say to most parents, turn your TV off for 30 minutes a night and read to your kids. That will definitely help your child improve when they go back to school.